Hello and welcome to the first semifinal cast in the 2023 Spy Party Masters Championship. I am Warning Track and I am joined by Slappy Davis with Wrestler Hosting and Lagorve Janine providing analysis. Tonight's semifinal match is actually a rematch of last year's SMC Finals and there's just as much at stake this year as there was last year. To tell you all about it, the competitors, we go over to Lagorve Janine. Hello, Gorv. Good evening, everybody. Um, we're going to start out with OP today. Uh, is in this semifinal because he placed first. Or sorry, second in his group, uh, with a win over Grosh, uh, and a pretty devastating loss to Rav. Uh, so in this highlight game here, we're gonna jump to fifty-five seconds. Uh, and for the highlight game for Opie, it's a loss. Uh, I don't think that Opie, in groups, did too much to deserve a highlight because he really needs to buckle down if he wants to win against Mini today. So we're looking at some weaknesses, potentially. We have a silent game here with uh, all four of the bottom missions that are in contact, not finish. And in fact, that led to three of four of uh, Rob's mission wins against Opie. Uh, and it's a really clean game from Rob, but uh, Opie needs to find uh, some more of these sniper wins, uh, which has really let him down against Rob there. Moving on over to Mini Rex game. Uh, this is a game that I casted against Lev. Uh, let me skip ahead to the latter stages here. Mini is got a transfer done, and he goes in for an inspect. Uh, and he's going to actually have to green swap this to hang the clock, but he's not going to be able to get the fingerprint done. And with that remaining time, he's going to land in conversation with the double agent, but he's not going to take it. He's going to decide to go for a... A crash bug instead even though this probably would have been a decent contact so opting for to go silent here is not something that mini often does but if he does it could be a weakness that uh, op could fall for uh, but mini great player all around uh won first place in his group and is here against op for it uh so i guess we'll get into our draft here uh and i was very surprised uh starting doubles uh yeah this is uh this is an unusual draft to say the least um slappy i know you have some thoughts about this a couple of surprises we probably have the same idea about this but i'll let you go first yeah uh the bands uh not that much of a surprise i guess i don't really know why many would bother banning veranda but i don't think opie really pick it but whatever i don't think mini really has that many weak maps um and then opie banning aquarium only because people will practice all day and all night shark walks versus him just because it's funny and you have unlimited motivation so that makes sense uh and then opie restricting redwoods famously good map for mini restrict on ballroom famously good map for opie everything in there makes sense then it gets weird in doubling terrace and doubling balcony very unusual doubles um especially terrace so balcony traditional pick for people that might uh, feel like they want to throw a little bit more randomness into the mix. Uh, a very swingy map. And Opie's actually quite good at Balcony. So I actually do, I see the value here. And it's going to set the tone really early on. The Terrace, I straight up don't understand. I don't actually have any insight on that one. That one is just weird because it's usually a very controllable map. I don't feel like Mini would have that much of an edge on it, but I might be missing something there. Yeah, I think it's interesting, though, that the bat, I think the balcony meta changes a little bit. Um, obviously, still a little coin flippy, as we always like to say. Maybe throw a little randomness in, as you like to put it. But also, increasingly, a good venue for people with high action test rates, because that is a disproportionate part of success on balcony. Both of these uh, players, as I recall, have particularly good action test rates, with Opie, if not the single best among Spy Party players, certainly in the top two or three. So that might be the thinking there, uh, is my thought at least. But it's a very interesting draft. Uh, of course, as you say, Aquarium Band, of course it is. People shark walk, shark walk all over him. He has PTSD, post-traumatic shark disorder. Even if he feels like he's getting pretty good at it, I think just the sheer emotional baggage attached to it, the number of things in the back of his head, and you combine that with restricting Redwoods. And what do you know, Opie the Sniper kind of wants to be able to see things. Um, pretty common sentiment there probably particularly acute for someone as good on the rifle as OP is. Uh, anything else you want to say about this draft, or should we get into the games? Uh, not so much, except for uh, uh, no Redwoods. 
um, even after the restrict. That surprised me. That was the other th thing that many opted for high rise over Redwoods. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe that's because many already felt like this is a pretty chaotic uh, set so that they wanted there to be a little bit more, but like, it's not like high rise is that much more. So that was the only thing that stood out in there. Otherwise, it's a long set, so pretty much every other map shows up. It's funny, when restricts were introduced into competitive spy party play, I think it was in one of the SCL seasons particular, there was a little bit of fun strategic meta, a little bit of, is there going to be a head fake? Will I restrict something in, to induce someone to pick it because they think I don't like it? Uh, and you wonder if maybe there was a tiny bit of that here. Probably not, but that is basically the, the highest level strategy you're going to get in a dr draft pick ban restrict scenario. Uh, but anyway, as you mentioned, we're doubling Terrace. Uh, you do not get to say that much, but we're going to see it now in a very high stakes match. We're going to Terrace first, as I oh, said. excuse me, York gentlemen. Is... One second track. Oh, I'm Before sorry. We, begin, we, we must need predict. To go... I, you know, I tried. I tried to just steamroll past it, but you didn't let me. Fair enough. No dodging this bullet. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. I'll... I have to go first, too. Is this left to right? I mean, of course. Uh, you know, it should be alphabetical. I should be last. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to say something that you're all already thinking, which is, of course, either player could win this. We're at a very high level now. Increasingly, these matches are about who wins on the day, who plays better that particular day. I think, obviously, the easy choice is Mini Orc wins last time. Why not give it to him this time? Opie, you know, let's say a little shaky in groups, as you mentioned, a very difficult loss to Rav. Obviously, no shame in losing to Rav, but losing 14-2 to two is no one's idea of an acceptable outcome, regardless of how well Rav is playing. So I think I'm going to say Mini Orc a little more practiced. Slight edge to Mini Orc. Yeah, overall, I think I agree. Um, one thing I did see in the set versus Grosh, though, is that once that Opie really started hitting their action test stride, they really got aggressive. And so if they start good and they start hot, I believe in OP, but I also worry about a terrace balcony opening. So um, while I think that there is definitely a lot of life here for OP, if we have a hot start, I feel like OP kind of needs a hot start to be in the fight where MIDI doesn't. So I think I'm leaning MIDI. I like it. I like it there. Yes, wrestler. Hello, welcome back. Bear with us, everybody. Some slight technical difficulties. Okay, uh, so Slappy, you're picking Mini, but with the caveat that you think Opie could uh, win if he starts strong. Yep, that's right. And he actually kind of needs to. Like, if he has swagger, he bleeds in his green tests, his spy is so much looser. All right. All right. Uh, I think this is, no doubt, for me, a Mini win. Uh, it's just going to be a question of how much. Mini is just in form. Opie's fallen off a bit. I'd like to see him prove himself a bit more. But Mini is in shape. And I think uh, these small venue uh, conversation pathing venues, are. it's going to be a, a really big battle of that if these two players can take advantage of it. Wow. I'm looking at the screen here, and I see three Obra Dinn icons. This looks like the coolest slot machine in the history of the world. We all pick mm -hmm. Mini. Uh, we're all going to look very smart or all very stupid, but at least we'll look that way together. Gentlemen, are you ready? I am indeed. All right. We are on Terrace of all places. We go there first. I don't know why, but we're going to be staying here a while regardless. Mini Orc as the spy playing as Duke in three, two, one, playing it. And uh, that little thing mentioned there at the end, pathing issues, that actually might be the answer to some of these weird venue choices. Mini Orc is going to be camping and looking for pathing issues, and Opie's going to be trying to avoid pathing issues. And you can see an early highlight coming out here, possibly Opie trying to look for flirts, one of the only things you should bother to do if you're normally a camper and you're on Terrace. Yeah, one of the things I do like about Terrace coming out first is that it doesn't come at the critical point in the game. It just Terrace is so often a single pick because they just don't like Courtyard or Tayan or something like that even more, right? And yeah. so Terrace coming out early where it's not in like the critical spot where it just feels like, oh, it gets, it's like this split or it's like this 50-50 thing and it's kind of weird. I do like it pairing early because it feels like there's more flexibility. If I were worried about being nervous at the beginning of a match, Terrace is the thing I would pick so that I could play my way in in a low-stakes environment. Uh, I'm not it's saying that's what true. happened, but that's what I would be thinking, certainly. 
That's true. I, th I, I agree where I don't think that that was the strategy going to do it, but like that works out really well because you can actually get a pretty decent terrace game without really doing anything too mechanically complex, right? Like you can right. just get your way into a decently chanced 50-50-ish play, but hopefully the sniper would be able to, to suss that out so it's not an automatic 50-50. But like, you have like a decent shot. This bug opportunity is really interesting. I don't know about Duke's snapback from that particular angle. I think Obi's holding it pretty well though. Yeah, holding the drink in the left hand and the right hand during his talking animation is very visible and up near his face. So it would be more visible than usual. Not a great time for it. And that's not the kind of game you're going to play on Terrace too often anyway. Opie, of course, zooming in on it. We're going to do banana a bread. fake banana bread. We are talking during it. So we're talking again here. The flirt has cooled it down. We're down to just 15% remaining. And our seduction target comes right back. We delegate to a green dress right away and finish the seduce right afterwards. And if we get this off in time, which I think we might have just, it's going to be two missions done with a minute left. Here it comes. There's no one at the bar to block it. And it does go off. And no hesitation at all from Opie, who had already highlight mini for the early flirt. Yes. No, I mean, like, this is, uh, well, one, it is a solid Tayan game. Um, would, again, like, that just kind of makes sense, right? Like, you both try to throw them off with the fake contact, get the purloin, and then you can sprinkle in a contact, or honestly not even contact, and just go for something a little bit wild at the end of the game. So try to throw the heat off there, but um, Opie all over it, and, uh, yeah, takes confident shot. Confident is the right word. Very often you go into those 50-50s and there's at least some hesitation, but you could tell at this point Opie Wrights had already made up his mind. If this is a purloin, I know who I'm shooting. Does not even hesitate. Up one nothing. Not a strong start yet, but the beginnings, let's say, of a strong start. A strong start to a strong start, which he might need, as Slappy suggested earlier. Let's see if he can cash in on the spy side, though, because very often Terrace is just a draw, so we haven't done anything difficult yet. Opie Wrights is playing as Buns on the spy in 3, 2, 1, playing it. And uh, Opie Wrights famously says Bun's an underrated spy. Not very popular, but uh, he likes her. One of the reasons he's given publicly, at least, is a small frame, uh, easy to hide behind larger characters. Yeah, and actually, not only would I think that shot was confident, I think it was excited. I think he was excited to start off not losing, right? Mm, Where you have yeah. like a shot you feel good about, where like of course it's also like there's a confident thing in there but i think that it just like it feels good okay thank god like it's not a sweep there we go. <laughs> right yeah opie known for his comebacks obviously the most famous comeback in spy party history the problem with being known for your comebacks is that it means you're also known for starting slow he has dug himself into many competitive holes and occasionally digs himself out and it can be a thrill to see but it's not the way you want to go so yes opie excited to at least not start off on the back foot and speaking of look at this an early flirt is going to get us to 51 percent with about two minutes left pretty decent start very common for opie to make a beeline for that seductive target and get that early green flirt in it's going to be a red. fake banana red right afterwards fakes for those who don't know very common on terrace because the sniper can see who the real da is so you're almost always doing two interesting here uh so i was starting to look at the green the action test so last game mini actually had uh okay there is the low light on duke i was really curious about that whether or not it was gonna happen because duke left right as that banana bread came off and so i don't know if mini would have credited duke with that as a way of saying uh, uh that was a super confident banana bread bail like you'd actually have to do it like as you would hit the green almost immediately right uh so like one there was not an immediate low light on it because Mitty wasn't sure. But then two eventually thought about it and said like, well, but then he ditched out into statues. Does Opie do that? No, Opie hates statues. Right. Yeah. Good point. Certainly. Uh, we're going to try to finish the third up here. We're not going to be, ooh, are we going to be close enough? We might be. We are, we're doing some body whore Cronenberg stuff here with Taft and that does indeed pay off and that it does get us the flirt done just like that. And with a minute left, we have one mission done, but it is the slowest, longest mission. It is also the safest mission. We haven't really accrued any suspicion, but there have been several of those aforementioned pathing lowlights and that stuff is very, very powerful on Terrace. Yeah, it came back to Biden just slightly on the Lev versus um, mini set where Lev came out of statues in an interesting way and got a low light and then ended up winning, I think, the uh, Courtyard Spry game. Uh, we are going to fail the bug on the way in here. That's actually extremely unfortunate. Also because Mini has correctly determined that that's the kind of bug that he would like to take and shoots him, I think, just for the path alone. Yeah, it's a little disheartening to have the bug not take and still get shot for it. All you've done is a fake contact and a seduce, but... This is what happens so often on Terrace against good snipers, and good snipers are all that's left this late in the competition. So still just 1-1. That first couple of Terrace games there kind of didn't matter. Just a little warm-up and amuse-bouche, if you will. Two more to go, though. Mini Auric back on the spy now, playing as general in 3, 2, 1, playing it. 
And it is like, what I do like about that though, is that still shows uh, some sort of opportunistic creativity from Opie. Taft was on the far side. Like that's just like a great setup that I'm going to try to commit to memory. We are going to have a possible Purloin coming out here later. There's a bar rush and we're the first one to grab Purloin. Um, but there was Taft on the, on the other side, Ambassador with a hole in between them. You could bury your arm on the wrong arm bug entering in the conversation into Taft really easily, right? You don't actually have to aim that well and the arm's not going to be seen as long as you don't see the snapback. Absolutely right, and it's uh, given the low percentage of a terrorist win in general, and that the party had not been maybe particularly kind to change your assessment of that likelihood, maybe you figure, well, this is about as good an opportunity as I'm going to get against someone like Minioric, might as well take it, and it turns out he's going to shoot for the suspicion anyway, even though it was not especially visible, I don't think. Minioric, as you said, went to the bar, grabbed a drink, and there was a rush of four or five people there. This is one of the things the party can do at Terrace to make a spy win a little more likely, but we're going to have to delegate pretty soon for that to be the case. We have sipped our drink. We still have one sip left, I think. I kind of like this, by the way, standing a little farther away from whoever you're going to delegate to, but you're going to have to do it pretty soon if you want it to take. And there, oh, and there it goes. Timer expired. We do not take advantage of the early rush. Yeah, no early rush in there. I mean, we might have a better chance of remembering who was at bar. Uh, I will say that I'm starting to understand why Mini picked Terrace a little bit. Uh, at this point in the game where Mini was sniping, half the party was almost low lit at that point. And that just seems so strong if he's got this ability to grab those padding um, low lights. From a, uh, from a map that's not very popular, so I guess spies also haven't had as many top chances to like practice pathing on, um, on Terrace and really like think about it. It's wide openness means that sometimes there's strange decisions that might feel a little counterintuitive. Yeah, no, absolutely right um, on all counts, I think. And Opie's certainly aware of that, but being aware and avoiding yeah, it are right. two different questions. There's a first green contact of our match. Goes off nice and smooth, and you're not going to give up too much in the way of lowlights here. You'll take two at this point in the game, especially relative to mission progress. But again, Opie doesn't know that. He doesn't know there is no flirt. He doesn't know there is only contact. And if we're going to time add, now would probably be the time. But we are right out front, and the laser is right over us. Yeah, it looks like that's not going to happen. Oh, it, right as we actually start. I mean, there's, it's a little bit beneficial that at least, well, actually, Mini doesn't quite follow up on the way that I was expecting. Right as we leave to go visit our seduction target, uh, seduction target moves at the exact same moment. We bounce off of them slightly and then go back to the pad. But actually, if we could follow them, we would have more time because we are, I don't, like, what's what's our time plan for seduce at this point? We're going to have... 15 seconds to get in out. I, I think, okay, Mini is rethinking the seduce altogether. Yeah. I think it has to be something like a swap and a bug or just a timeout. I, I don't see. I think when we went to Windows, that was when we ponder what we do. And once we decided to do nothing there, we're committed to the timeout and hoping for a panic shot. But Opie uh, does not necessarily take those. He won't here. And that's a great hold from Opie. Nice little test there of the sniper. I don't mind it, especially on Terrace. You see if something lines up. If it does, you take it. And if it doesn't, you just make them sweat it out. But Opie does sweat it out and comes out on top and now has a chance to go up 3-1 as we finish off Terrace here. It's going to be the best dressed man at the party, as Opie likes to say and everyone else likes to agree with. Opie is Seek in 3-2-1 playing it. And two good tests for Opie right away, right? Like a very aggressive game where we were able to get the shot off at the right time and basically was on top of the spy from the beginning. And then another game where it's hard to tell from the outside, but a game where, like you're saying, the game just kind of fell apart and Minnie was willing to press into a potential just sieve shot for, you know, being stressed, right? Yeah. Uh, so both ends of the kind of spectrum tested for Opie. The ability to be patient. Oh, okay, we don't decide to take that bug. I was really worried about us trying to take that one. Mm. I mean, you're right. Both spectrums for sure. Both ends of the spectrum, rather. Um, a lot of people say, why not do something? Why not at least try to win? And, so, and most of the time you do, but every now and then you do need to take a pointless timeout for a game that's not coming together, rather than the 2% chance of a rush working. There's a swap, by the way. I'm going to hold my thought for just a second here, and we're going to see how this plays out first. It, it would be very easy to kind of disregard swap, because who would do that? But Mini Auric does kind of twitch a little with their laser afterwards. I can't tell if that's incidental movement or a sort of double take seeing that new statue shape. Here comes some low lights. That's a pathing low light for Mini Auric. I genuinely can't tell from the sniper's movement whether or not they've noticed this swap. I can't tell either, but it just feels like it's just so on camera, but it's such a non opie like play, right? I mean, like, so of course, Opie wasn't trying for that, I'm almost sure. Uh, I guess I guess I can't be certain of that because I wasn't sure if there's anybody at that statue before. It doesn't look like Minnie has caught up on any of that, but it doesn't seem like it, right? It seems like Opie was probably hoping for a green swap, contact, and then inspect while the other one's going off or something like that, right? Probably. Um, 
So this is this is fascinating because that would wouldn't that be something if Mini is so focused on pathing because they're giving up statues, right? That they don't actually catch something as out front and as bad on this map like swap. I mean, that is the thing. When people catch weird, subtle things that no one else does, people think, my God, how am I supposed to win? Well, the answer is they're looking at that instead of something else. Certain obvious things become more viable. It took people about two years to figure that out in regards to Virafo, as you probably remember, that occasionally you could just swap in their face uh, because they're looking for flirts instead. There is always a cost certainly, to whatever you're looking at. There's going to be a Seduce. It's going to get us up to 66% at Windows. We're only 45 seconds left. It's not great. However, the fact that it's a Windows means we can come back and potentially finish this and maybe contact right afterwards. We're going to sidle up next to them, and we have a little bit of time here. There's the cooldown. 30 seconds left on the clock. Here's the flirt. It's good. And now, a contact could win this game. I feel like uh, I, I'm not the biggest fan of how we came back into this conversation and forced ourselves next to them. I actually think that we should have risked being on the far side and going for a green trust cross conversation circle. Yep. I feel like Minnie's on it, but... Uh, well, that double agent has the briefcase, which means we cannot contact, which means we have to go to bar. Our chances of winning this game are absolutely dwindling now. It's going to be an immediate purloin and an immediate shot in the head. And now, unless someone wants to go ask Minnie Oric later, we're not going to know whether or not they were going to get shot for that contact. That is really unfortunate timing. Yeah, really would have seen uh, what the what the contact would have done. And I'm also just very curious about how much additional, like, because we went, we did the sidle up the next two on Windows. I feel like that started giving stuff away. And if we hadn't have gone cross conversation circle, we might have been able to just rush that contact. I think we still would have probably gone for a seduce first and still DA would have bailed on us. So unfortunate for Opie, but hopefully because we went for that last second rush, Opie sees it and chalks it up as a bad luck game and maybe honestly counts the split as a bit of a blessing. Well, it certainly doesn't hurt anything, yeah. And uh, you were probably a little closer to winning your spy games than Mini Orc was there, so you can take that with you. To finish my thought earlier, though, um, about the timeout, obviously you want to try to win every game. If you're going to timeout, there's no point, except every now and then you do benefit, particularly against the opponent you're going to be playing in the future, particularly in the opening games of a long set, you do benefit a little bit from showing them you're willing to time out. It can pay dividends down the line. And if you're trading those dividends for, what, a 1% chance of your crazy rush working on Terrace where there's very little obfuscation, I think it can be a good move now and then. It's something you have to have in your bag of tricks and commit to just now and then just to keep them honest. So I like the move. We'll see if it works or not, though. Terrace ends up being a wash. We are on to balcony instead. Mini York spying first. White dress. Three, two, one play in it, and this is, it's not all action tests, but it is disproportionately action test based now. Yeah, interesting uh, uh, start where we took control immediately, thought about pathing back into the conversation next to our seduction target. Uh, honestly, we're actually having a little bit of a rough time pathing in here, but I don't think it's going to matter at all because Opie's not going to be looking for pathing as much on Balcony or any map, but um, especially here, I think they're just going to be concentrating on the first talks. So we're going to have a long time before our first talk. It's getting into the... Okay, there we go. There's the first talk. Every once in a while, when there's no first talk, like for the first 30 seconds, I start to wonder, is this a, a no-flirt contact bug game, right? Right. Well, it's just when someone is watching for flirt because they have nothing else to watch for, that early talk is suddenly very risky. A lot of players say, ah, screw it. I'm just going to try to do it anyway. Make them shoot for soft tails. Maybe I can two flirt it and make them shoot for that. But increasingly, you'll get people who say, I'm just not going to flirt in the first 20 seconds. I don't want to be one of those early talk highlights. Yeah, and depending, these actually, these lowlights are actually really good. And there might be a low light on Irish, depending on where they settle into this conversation. Uh, okay, banana they are going to get rooted for that. Uh, banana bread comes off. Uh, there's only one talker. There's a lot of suspicion seemingly being thrown towards Smallman, probably just because of the bug threat, though. And uh, we still need to do flirt one more time, and we have to either leave this conversation or... Uh, yep, yeah, okay, we are going to leave this conversation. Smallman was the talker, and if you could pick a civilian to talk during your banana bread, you would pick Smallman. So a little bit of luck there. We are not dead after the contact. There's 27 seconds left, 82% on the flirt. As long as we are not completely across from our seduction target, it will get it done. The lowest flirt possible, 17%. We're going to go for a briefcase instead with 17 seconds left. Interesting choice here. We do have time to get in here a little late. I think we're trying to just shed a little bit of suspicion, but it's possible we are not a big suspect, and it might just cost us time instead. And it's going to lead to overtime after this flirt. We've joined across from our seduction target. It will be close enough. Here's the flirt. It happens. There's going to teal be talks. Teal talks. Oh, teal talks. And that could lead to a shot instead. And it absolutely does. The double agent, true to their name, basically takes a bullet for the spy. 
oh my god, I cannot believe that they talked at the exact same time. Because, and like, Opie is actually on top of it. That is exactly when Minnie would do this kind of play and talk at this kind of moment. But Teal bails us out. Honestly, that game did not look like it was coming together perfectly for Minnie. I don't, like, I get the briefcase redirect thing, but it completely relied on one of the other people talking, in my opinion, because it's just a loss if we were the only person talking at the end there. I mean, as you say, it's exactly the kind of time Minnie York would start talking. Manifestly, it happened right then. That is exactly when he started talking, but he gets a little interference from Teal instead, and that's the kind of crazy stuff that a balcony game can turn on. That breaks serve, and Opie writes now down 3-2, to two, trying to even back up, playing as Taft in 3 two, one, playing it. I don't know about that balcony decision, but it's uh, sorry, rather the briefcase decision on balcony, uh, but it sure worked. I mean, I don't know about the balcony decision uh, after this <laughs> yeah, anyways, right. regardless. Okay, early, early banana bread. This is a really odd pacing, right? Almost never do you see banana bread come before the first flirt. So that is going to maybe it. throw Mini Gork on the back foot, though, because your pace is off now. Your pace is off, and your the timing in the back of your head, you're not waiting for it as a cue shot anymore. You have to shoot for something silent now, which is a very weird feeling on balcony. It also allows you to get something done while you're getting past that opening 20 seconds I mentioned where you don't necessarily want to be one of the first talkers. And to combine it with a green flirt, the green contact, I think it's a great move. Yeah, one problem we're going to have here, and I'm wondering if we're going to twitch over once, is we had 49% of the first green flirt. Mm, we actually point. need to twitch close once more if we want the two flirt. We might just, honestly, okay, here's the leaf. And then we did hang out for a long time and didn't talk. It's an odd thing for a spy to do. Maybe there's a low light coming out for that kind of thing. Really quick stay at the window, though. Don't know about that. I like a little AI looking, right? Get closer to the ambassador, but obviously not to bug. It's one of those sort of why would I do that kind of things. We are going to squeeze in here, and Mini York's not going to. Oh, I was going to say Mini York's not going to like that, but he likes it very much indeed. Not as much as Opie's going to like it when he sees this, if it does play out like we think it might. If he hits this green test, hard to imagine he's going to get shot taking his time. It's a white, and that is one of the few ways this game could go awry. Yeah, we absolutely, like, I don't think we can be uh, going out to windows again like this. We really need to touch a target to leave and what we could join them at windows, but a leave and a walk back is gonna be really awkward, but we have to. This is very, very bad. That green obviously wins the game, but now we're gonna have to rush back. We're gonna have to do the same sort of thing that Mini York did, and I don't imagine we're gonna get the same kind of assist that they did. We send a few seconds at windows, we come back, we don't go right next to our target, but we're still very noticeably there. We pick up the briefcase. Was that a misclick? Was that a priority issue? No, we're gonna flirt and return it, and it looks like it might work. What a move to try to salvage this game. It's gonna be a couple of seconds of overtime, but not much. We're not even on screen, and it doesn't matter. The seduction target takes the bullet, as well as our affections. My God, Opie played that absolutely brilliantly and even salvaged it when it almost didn't work out literally as you said my god i was thinking jesus christ and we need someone to say holy spirit complete the trinity what a game i actually thought that that's what mini was going for the first game by the way was a briefcase pickup twitch talk and then re go return right because he was on the far side of the conversation i love this this is actually really high play for balcony it's a little disappointed honestly to see balcony come up like this because i'm like Honestly, the terrorists kind of went the way that I thought. These balcony games are awesome. Yeah, they are awesome. And the only real question for me is, does he get away with that maneuver if he's not already low lit? Or was that the key? I'm genuinely not sure. But whatever it is, it was a really well-played game. Obviously a little mad at himself. I'm sure he was cursing up a storm after not hitting that second green test. But it ends up being even cooler than just hitting a couple of green tests for the flirt, which is... Nice, but pedestrian, let's say, for someone like Opie. So that is a really strong response to keep this even at three. You'd love to be going up with that kind of win. As you said, you think you need to start strong. It's strong play, but not strong results yet. We are still drawn here, and it's going to be Mini Oric now playing as you-know-who in three, two, one, playing it. It was going to happen eventually. First smallman of the match. Yeah, and the further that we start getting into the set, the more important that, okay, we are also going to be doing the opening banana bread thing. It's going to apply some of that pressure in there. Uh, really solid low light on uh, hair uh, was turning around right at that exact moment. Curious about the low light on Duke, though. That might just be a behavioral tell about when they were uh, having the drink come over to them. Well, there could be a little fluid on balcony, not necessarily very hard low lights. Easy to watch your low lights too as well, although in the previous game, as we mentioned, it might have been the difference. Either way, it's going to be 42% on the flirt to go with that early contact. It's not great, but you'll take it, especially you're only 40 seconds into the game and you've got a mission and a half done already, and we're going to get the heck out of here. Go out and look at the cityscape and then make our way back. But here's the thing. There's no reason to cozy up next to our seduction target because we can't two-flirt any way, so we get to stand across from them again. The problem is we're still next to other people like Hare, as you mentioned earlier. 
Um, so in this case, it actually maybe makes more sense to actually be next to them. Right, yeah. Uh, I was actually a little bit worried for Minnie about getting potential pair credit uh, by Teal, because we didn't leave that soon after she came, and so there might be a little something there. But honestly, uh, Teal would actually be a bit of a suspect if she wasn't already low-lit. These low-lits have been sticking around, by the way, and they've been accurate so far. It's really cool seeing adaptive um, sniper play from Balcony, too. There's the green flirt, but that's going to get you 93%. It's a very frustrating number, and you are in a very suspicious spot as the most suspicious character, uh, which is always going to get you a little extra attention. As, as you can see, also, it has given us a low light, uh, sorry, a highlight, rather. 30 seconds left, and we are going to have to leave and come back. We're in a very similar situation to the previous game. Not only did we kind of ape the early contact, which worked out beautifully, but we also have to move around a little bit, except this time the seduction target leaves for us. We're going to have to walk by the briefcase. We might be obligated to take it. Instead, we're going to flirt at windows. We're going to get it done. We're going to take the briefcase right afterwards. This is so similar to the previous game in so many ways. There's going to be no overtime. Three seconds left. No shot seems to be forthcoming. And Opie answers Minnie, and Minnie answers right back with a tiny, tiny little punch. Yeah, uh, uh, honestly, that was another one where we had a bit of a gamble at the end there. Um, Duke had been at that window for quite a long time. I was actually surprised to not see us go for Duke there for um, uh, for as long as we did. I do like the briefcase pickup play, of course, um, where we just left right after doing that flirt. But we did leave our fate a little bit in Fortune's hands there. It did work out. Uh, I'm just very really curious what would have happened if we didn't actually have that timing window available to us. It has been the briefcase wars here on Balcony. All sorts of crazy maneuvers and last-second shenanigans. However, Mini Auric is going to at least draw that war, if not win it outright, depending on this final game. Opie, now trying, despite some very strong play, now has to win a spy on Balcony just to stay even through these first crazy venues. It's going to be going to an old, familiar standard. It's going to be general in three, two, one, playing an old, familiar standard because he likes his bug in particular, but uh, not as applicable on Balcony as it might be on most other venues. Yeah, and uh, interesting, there is no Smallman on this map, not even as a uh, as an AI. Um, so we did not actually grab that, so Smallman had played a little bit into, I think, all of the previous Balcony games, but at least two of them. Um, but we don't go for that. We're kind of actually sandwiched in between here. I am actually a little worried for us. We are we're the most sandwiched person on this map. We don't I know even red. who of the two would be contacting. We do get that green um, contact, though. And we do get the low light on Teal. That um, She started talking right after the banana bread, and that seemed to be enough for Mini to go in and say that's probably not them. This conversation etiquette so far has been on uh, on point for both players. And every low light you get on Balcony that you're confident about is absolutely massive uh, for obviously the elimination of the suspect because there's so few, but specifically just being able to stare down who is remaining. A lot of early contacts. This time, I don't think it's going as well as it did the last time. But we do still have that flirt, and we are going to get a second one in here. It's going to take at least three, so someone's going to have to move. Could be us, could be the seduction target. Little inflection point there after her sip, but she does not leave afterwards. Here comes that second flirt. It's green, but it only matters so much. We do get highlight for it, too. I don't know if that's a good trade at this point in the game. Yeah, I was I was curious, honestly, if there was going to shot come off, because this this could have been just a you know a three green, but um, Minnie just playing the odds, I think, at that point. And it's correct, right? Like, even if um, even if someone has an 80% three green rate, there's, I don't actually know the math on that one, but it's actually pretty likely that they did not get it in any particular game. Well, let me see here. It is about 50-50, come to think of it, with an 80% rate. It's somewhere in that general range, because it's 64% on two, I think. Uh, so, yeah, you're about right. Uh, does, is playing the odds, and because he does not have an 80% rate, it's more like 65 to 70. So a little less likely than not, even for the best of the best. We are running low on time here. We're not going to be able to finish it, and there's Opie committing to that timeout. Oh, he I think he thought maybe he could get it in just under the wire. And you could see this, begin flirtation with seduction target, 0.2 seconds. Yeah, I think that uh, Opie definitely thought that they had the exact timing figured out. So the flirt, the flirt happened at 45.8. Uh, honestly, you know what's funny about this is, it's that's the difference between maybe placement on the bar even, right? Because yes, yes, yes. on the first one, if it had been sooner, just by a fraction, and the second one, if that had been sooner, you put those two together, maybe with the last thing. I think we still die in OT, so not too much worse for wear there, but not in uh, not a timeout, always better. Well, here's another way to look at it. Look earlier in the timeline. Flirt cooldown, uh, cooldown expired 11.1, 111.1 rather, and we decided to wait a little while before doing that second flirt. If we'd done that second flirt just a few seconds earlier, 
we get that done. Instead, we're going to go down to halftime. It's going to be 5 3 Mini Auric, making us all look like geniuses with our respective predictions. And that's going to be halftime. We're going to get a little analysis now from our analyst, Lagorv Janine. Lagorv Janine, what are you seeing? What are you thinking? What did you take note of? That was a, a great first half. Uh, wrestler i'd like to see game four again if you could uh i loved games uh five and six those were the uh traded briefcase flirts in the last few seconds uh with one of them being op as a low light uh i loved both of them so i couldn't give either one of them the spotlight we're gonna take a more tame look at game four here uh and more specifically i want to look at these opening seconds uh, it's not super flashy, but I just want you to watch the way Mini guards Green into conversation. She guards her because she gets a complete opportunity to have bugged the ambassador, rotates perfectly until he can see that Green Dress has a drink in hand, and then, is, and then starts taking his lowlights. It's really simple, but I think that's such a great demonstration of how, as a player, you should be guarding your ambassador at the start of the game. It's not super flashy. The rest of this game, Opie gets away with a swap. Perhaps it's because Minnie's paying attention to low lights. That could be it. We that could be the second time in this match uh, that uh, Minnie's pathing attention actually came back to bite him. But I really love to see that few those few seconds of Minnie diligently guarding the ambassador because it's the like clearest I've ever be, been able to see someone do that. I hate to interject so. before you get to your second clip, but I do want to echo what you're saying and say that obviously it's very tempting when you start every sniper game. I'm sure we all feel this way. That compulsion to low light your cast and memorize your statues and all that other stuff. But sometimes if something's under threat immediately, you need to put pause on that for five or six seconds. Make sure the party's in a nice, safe, subtle, uh, controlled state and then go on with your housekeeping. And I think that's a perfect example, uh, what you just pointed yeah. out. I, I could be wrong. I could just be misreading Minnie's laser, but that seems to be how... I mean, he's playing this diligently. Uh, we could look again at, the, at some of those briefcase flirts, but other than that, I think we are good to move on to the second half. All right. Uh, I think that's a, a great subtle choice, um, and particularly the kind of thing that, as you say, is not flashy, but it is a big part of being one of the better snipers in the game. It's just that sort of thing where you have your routine, you can do it quickly, but if the situation calls for it, you can suspend your normal operations and go back to it when it is safe to do so. There will always be downtime in the party, but it is not necessarily at the beginning of the party, especially against someone like Opie, uh, who is known to do aggressive things early in the game. So I think with that, we're going to get on to the second half of this match. Opie is down 5-3 to three now in that early hole. Not a big one, mind you. And has played extremely well, it has to be said. But those marginal little losses here and there, it really doesn't take much against the best of the best. We're going into Modern now. Mini York's going to be spying first as Teal in 3, 2, 1, playing it. And this is uh, the second half completely different already from the first. Yes, exactly. Like it, this is these are going to be extremely different games. I am glad that actually uh, Modern I don't get to see doubles of that much. I mean, it's because of the longer format that we get the doubles of Modern altogether. But um, I really like seeing how players deal with Modern and like this little meta that they can create across four games. So very interested to see what we do with this. I, by the way, don't think we're going to do anything in this book. I think this book's going straight back. Yeah, I think that's probably right, but it gives the sniper another thing to remember. Uh, I'm getting absolute spy party whiplash from casting this after Terrace and Balcony. There's so many freaking arrows to keep track of. Oh, 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 I like, I like that move though. So like, uh, I, I want to know if OP anticipated that or it was just like a, a decent rotation timing. No, actually, I think we did. I think we had to have seen the stop out there. That was, uh, that was super fun. So I definitely, because it's like, there's no way that Mini is just going to go for a straight um, straight transfer with that bread book. Too. But I did not think about just trying to take a little pause there. And that feels like a player read, because uh, I don't think there's any reason for us to be rotating right then. Right. And specifically, Modern does have this issue where there is sort of an optimal position to be in. It's right to the right of the corner of the venue. So you're about right in the golden ratio, right? Of about two thirds of the venue is on your right and maybe one third on the left. And you can see almost everything. You just give up a little bit of occlusion from the conversations. And it is exactly that occlusion in which Minioric tried to pull his sneaky little maneuver and with it the microfilm out of the red book. So it's kind of a high risk, high reward maneuver there where you're just assuming 
there's not going to be just kind of that standard nervous rotation that you do just to fill time. Yeah, absolutely. If Ambassador had been more towards the front of the, um, uh, more towards that optimal sniper position, like you're saying, we might not have even seen this little rotation over there and be able to guard Bug at the same time. Because I don't know if, I don't know if Opie would have given up guard on Bug all the way to see that, just check it out. But um, no, very good in Opie. And uh, still might put a little bit of fear in his mind if he sees only half of a potential transfer later. But anyways, great catch by Opie. And a very confident shot like the one you were mentioning earlier. Opie's sniper certainly seems to be on point. He's only lost to some very exceptional, crazy shenanigans on Balcony, for example. Things like that. Some really well-played games. But still needs to find that spy win here on Modern. He needs to pull back at some point. Here's his chance. Playing as, let's see, which twin is this? This is plain twin in three, two, one. Playing it. You said with a little bit of disappointment, I think. Uh, just a little bit. I uh, also disappointed myself for not checking before I started the sentence. But yes, Bling Twin, my favorite of the two, if I had to pick. Because I have cosplayed as Bling Twin. And the reason you cosplay as Bling Twin and not Plain Twin is because it's the exact same thing, except you get to buy more little bits of stuff. And so it's more obvious what you're trying to do. I feel like you get you could get good use out of those shoes, by the way. Those shoes look great. I do own the saddle shoes. They are pretty much identical looking. They are not comfortable, uh, and they go with almost nothing, but they are kind of cool. They also just kind of look like bowling shoes, so I feel like you can just like, take it down. <laughs> they look a lot like bowling shoes. That's true. All right, well, slow start for right now. We haven't been able to pick up a flirt, even though we've just been hanging on the conversation for a long time. Uh, it doesn't look like there's been too much activity elsewhere. This would be a great time for a time ad, which exactly, that is what we're going to do. Um, let's see if Mini is looking for it. It is going to be right in front of us, and there's not that much going on except for Ambassador. So we'll see if anything comes off here. But um, I agree with that timing, though, because we've just done nothing. Well, it's a green test. A highlight is at window. Two people are at windows, although we probably can't know that Taft is a low light. The other person at windows is a highlight. So all in all, pretty good. And as you say, you obviously you figured out that it is at a good time. You had the same sense, and it certainly is. And it's easier for us to say with that kind of broad view of the party. Our highlights get bumped back down now. It turns out they were bar highlights. We are doing decaying bar highlights, as uh, many people do on Modern. It puts a pretty significant cognitive load, but then again, so does Purloin. Yeah, absolutely. And especially as this timing window comes up where there's going to be a bunch more visitors. And if you don't actually throw the decay down and you yep. like, cause some likes that you get, like, sometimes people segment them into like, okay, this is the first wave. And now right. I'm going to start going down on the first wave. And sometimes people can be a little dicey with whether or not the last part of the first wave would have actually had purloin clear yet or not. But that's going to line up really well with that. We're going to walk slightly through conversation circle. It didn't look like we were looking in there. It didn't look like it was prompted by anything either. So I think we might've gotten a little lucky. I'll tell you what else makes uh, managing the decay a little harder. Seconds that don't pick off at a second per second anymore after a green time ad. So just another little hurdle there. We're going to grab a blue book, and we're going to run right over to green. And Miniorx Laser jumps up near the spy's head and does not shoot. We are, I think, suspicious, but we're waiting for a little more evidence before we convict. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, this feels like... Um... Yeah, there's the, there's the stealth highlight. Uh, it's been seen. I'm almost positive that this will just end in a shot. So this is a little bit of information gathering. The fact that this is being, uh, that Modern is doubled, uh, sometimes snipers will do this on maps where they like to know a little bit more about how the player's feeling in that moment and see like, okay, let's say they did this. I want to have some information about how they would finish, right? And it looks like it's going to be statues, which is Good point. A it's information, off. right? It's information. Even if you're 99% sure, if you know they can't be done yet, I want to know what their game plan is. And also, just getting their hopes up, only to dash them, uh, has some psychological value, I hate to say. Yeah, absolutely. One thing, the only way in which it does benefit sometimes is I've been stealth highlight before, and then I'm feeling good. I don't think I'm highlight. Then I botch the end of the game, and then I find out, oh, it's dead anyways. <laughs> it didn't matter what I did, right? Yeah, so it's lose-lose. So either the thing I happened mentioned it is mentioned, or it turns out you lost because you screwed up horribly, but at least then you don't feel bad about that. You just feel bad about the other thing. Exactly, yep. Okay. And uh, you take the edges you can get. Uh, so uh, I was This is a big moment, actually. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. It's a big moment because I mentioned that if we are a major suspect, you're not going to shoot until they could be done, and you know how confident could you be? That second statue visit is a could-be-done kind of moment, unless you really feel like you've got a very strong mission count on this person. Yeah, and we tried to go for a mutual redirect um, kind of play in there. I don't actually know how much, uh, how suspicious Minnie's going to be of that. That felt like a really light touch for that bounce to happen. 
Um, actually, luckily for us, right now we're joined by an SDA. So again, through the conversation circle. I don't know about this. Oh, I don't know what you know about this either, if there's going to be enough time. Okay, Brocker, people have been actually pretty chill at Windows recently. I keep thinking that these timings for the window visits are pretty uh, dicey. And uh, like you said, like, uh, 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 unless Mini has an extremely good count on the missions, I'm surprised we haven't yet gotten shot. We joined a conversation with a double agent, and just as we joined, they want nothing to do with us. That was going to be the final mission with 30 seconds left, and now we've got to go do something else. We're going to go idle in this conversation, I think. We're going to go to bar. We're going to have an option to purloin, but it also will let us see where this double agent settles after going to the red bookshelf. So i got to imagine we're going to prefer contact if we can do it, but our options are not great. Here it happens again. It happened on Terrace. We couldn't contact to finish on Terrace. We might not be able to do it to finish here. We don't. We purloin, and we lose what might have been another winnable game as Spy. Yeah, uh, uh, obviously hard to know exactly what would have happened with the contact, but I do want to have seen what would have happened because that was just really unfortunate. The pacing was, we were able to find our way to the, um, to what it was, uh, uh, even without the highlight, just a good solid game. Like the whole game plan was there, the transfer first, um, so that there's no, there's not being watched for anything like that. And then just go do a straightforward inspect and seduce to get that through. And if we don't get caught for the transfer, very hard to get shot. And then we just kind of get, robbed right there at the end i it just feels like of course we were in a lot of danger regardless we were being watched really closely at the end there but yeah. still would have liked to have been put through our paces certainly the contact might have prompted a shot but the fact that we weren't dead yet suggests that there was a chance it was going to work and now it's happened to opie twice with the double agent spurning them we were wearing bowling shoes but the sniper did not spare us and opie remains down six to four mini orc is the spy now on modern playing as ponytail in three two one playing it and actually, the exact scenario I was talking about before hopefully came into play for Opie there, where if Opie goes back and checks that replay, maybe they don't worry about, like, throwing away what was, mm. a, like, a one game, right? For sure. Yeah, yeah. And They're I think, obviously, early. that time ad in particular really enabled Opie to pick his spots, and it very, I think, very nearly worked. Yeah, you know, it's actually one of the more direct kind of, like, seeming trade-offs is people that watch really closely for etiquette, uh, they still watch missions, but they don't watch... Uh, windows as much right for right. for time ads specifically because they're always doing something like sometimes if you're just camping you can actually find boring spots right where it's right. like well i guess i can check time but there's always nothing etiquette. else to do yeah there's always etiquette there's always etiquette i will say though that one of the reasons they might not watch for it is that there's less upside in watching for it because one of the things people say is that you want to rush an etiquette sniper because the more time the party goes on the more they accumulate low lights so there's a bit of a self-balancing thing there where you don't notice as many time ads because you're watching for etiquette but on the other hand it gives you 45 seconds more to low light people for etiquette that's true yeah and especially if the if the etiquette is not stuff like um uh, idling right because that's the thing is if like you idle into a into a time ad then you get the time back for the idle and just you have a low light and you're that's the kind of even but that's not so much i don't think what mini's been doing as far as his um, downtime low lights what mini is doing is doing what i would say he He's playing a very Opie-like game. Early aggressive flirt into inspects, comes right back, does not manage to two-flirt it, but this already, if you told me the roles were reversed, I would believe you. It looks like we're going to try to finish with inspects at some point, but of course the question is always going to be, what's that fourth mission? Is it going to be a swap? Is it going to be a bug? Is it going to be a purloin? That is always the question on 4 of 8 Modern. Yeah, and Mini's camera has been glued to Ambassador, so it kept feeling like a bug, but the fact that they're dropping a print at um, Red Bookshelf might change their mind a little bit. Uh, it looks like they are potentially, they're going to set up for uh, nothing. They're just going to go back to the same statue that they'd already inspected before. I was curious if we were going to try to pick up the briefcase, do some sort of, oh, this is a fingerprintable. I was going to say, that would be odd. It seems like we're going to fingerprint, but we opt for the potentially less suspicious one. That sort of lose uh, suspicion by going back to the same statue for no reason. It works well on small venues where you know you're going to be noticed, but on a bigger one, it would be very strange. Our seduction target allows us to stand across from them in this uh, empty conversation right next to the statues. That works out very, very well. By the way, I think your mention of fingerprints was the first mention from either of us in the entire match so far. Very strange, and I, I do like to see fingerprint getting a little love. That might be the way to go here. Yeah, the, unfortunately for us, the fingerprints at least can get smudged here. I actually didn't see... Okay, and there is a highlight coming off for the fingerprint, it looks like, at that bookshelf. So that looks like it's the first one that went on there. So uh, depending on what happens here, there might be a smudged fingerprint. Mini Order is still looking around a little bit. I mean, of course, if uh, Ambassador drops that fingerprint on another set of statues, we could just go do all of that at once. But it looks like we are setting up for the banana bread in the meantime. 
Yeah, and it's going to be a fingerprint on the drink instead. The low, uh, low light's coming off from that contact, but honestly, for a Modern, not that terrible. Unless we decide to take some of these for a possible fake, we do not. There's the fingerprint right afterwards, the briefcase, and it's happening while Opie Wright's sort of managing the party and making decisions about highlights and lowlights. It is noticed, but it's a genuine question here whether or not we're really willing to shoot for an inspector. Are we going to go right into statues afterwards with a minute left? I think you want to, or you're going to be down near the end of the game. Mini Orc agrees, does not want to wait until the last second. We've had too many of those already in this match. We're going to inspect here, and either we're on these fingerprints or we're not, and the sniper laser, does it indicate it's not? No, it does not. That's a highlight. We are either not on the fingerprints or we don't want to believe it, and that is going to be an absolutely backbreaking win for Mini Auric here. Yeah, one of the worst parts of this for um, uh, for Opie is that, honestly, this a lot of this came down to the fact that we didn't clean up our highlight on um, Irish when she was out of conversation during Banana Bread, because that seemed to be the where we're throwing a lot of our attention at the end there, correctly looking for a fingerprint finisher, but that's just the cleanliness thing, right? That's like we did not actually get all of the uh, lowlights available to us on our top suspect right as that Banana Bread was coming up. I'm actually was surprised at the time and still surprised now that we did not get that low light on there because I felt like we were paying so much attention to where she was. I, I think I think the statue print was probably missed, if I had to guess. Uh, I think rather than missing the briefcase in the turmoil after the contact, I think there was about 30 seconds from when the ambassador put the statue down to when Minioric picked it up, and there was a lot of movement in the party around the same time, and I think it got quickly forgotten, especially being in that back corner. And this is the thing with being a good mission counting sniper. If you think you have a good mission count and you're one print off, that's all it takes. Personally, I can say this because I don't really play competitively anymore, but back in the day I had an unofficial policy, which I did not talk about until I retired, of if I think someone is done except for one fingerprint, I generally incline towards shooting with the assumption that I missed a fingerprint, at least a difficult somewhere. I was never confident enough in my mission counting to be down to the correct number of fingerprints with any confidence, especially with difficulties being out there. So in this case, if that's what happened, that would have been the difference between a win and a loss, but who knows, just speculation on my part. Opie writes now, uh, we were saying before, you know, needs a spy win to press ahead, needs a spy win to get back even. At this point, realistically, might need a spy win to have any chance of staging a comeback. It is first to 11, mind you, but a three-game deficit at this point in the in the match is uh, it's pretty big. I'm, <laughs> I don't have any clever way to say it. It's just a big deal. Opie writes his Duke in three, two, one, playing it. Yeah, double bumper, because also while we were trying to think about whether or not, uh, not maybe to shoot, but just like level sufficient, we're going to start with inspects here. I just hope we don't do something. Okay, good. We have, we're not full tilt. We haven't gone for a green swap right at the beginning of the game. Well, I guess I should wait for him to put the statue back. <laughs> okay, there we go. Then but, I you, cast curse. but you still have picked up on something, which is this is still early aggression. Uh, and I feel like when Opie's back is against the wall, that's what he does. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And then just trust his green chest, right? <laughs> we get the highlight, but it's a late... Well, actually, though, that seems like there's a little bit of a consideration. It goes back and forth. That's actually worse, though, if it goes back and forth and it ends up being a highlight. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, KCM famously said that if you're changing the lighting on someone over and over and over again, it's usually the spy. I don't know if he literally believed that, but it stuck with me for whatever reason. Yeah, at least you just leave them at a highlight. If you're going back and forth on someone, you leave them as the highlight, and then you just yes. try to watch them a little bit more. Anyone that warrants this much thought warrants some watching. Not a whole lot going on here other than those inspects. Uh, the seduction has not really lined up, uh, partially because they are alone in a conversation, and I think we want to see where they land before we risk following them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this is just a terrible bug position, so we're, I do not think we're possibly thinking about taking this unless Mini does a full attention redirect, but I, just, I don't know why we're hanging out here. I think we want this fingerprint when um, Ambassador leaves, but Ambassador's got no reason to leave. And not only that, every once in a while when Ambassador just hangs out in a front conversation circle where there's enough people talking to him um, that they, it keeps them there. Uh, it makes the rest of the game really manage for the sniper, right? There's just nothing really else to look at right now. We can keep track of our purloins really easily. We can look for inspects. Okay, here we go, finally. I'm sure we're gonna go for this fingerprint. I think you're right, and yes, it can make that game much easier, especially for snipers who make a particular point to guard bug very quickly, which these days is every good sniper. Yeah, absolutely. And just modernity, just in general, like actually there was a suggestion, I think, by um, Nebula to make the conversation circles smaller so that it just happens less often. Like, still keep the number of conversation circles, but with smaller conversation circles, we if this was 50% uh, smaller, we would have been ambassador space. Ambassador would have been forced out a while ago. We're not going to get this briefcase, at least the first one. Uh, this might just be a straight 
late game frame play because it's been so slow. Oh, and Opie writes, it's almost like he can hear you through time and space and goes over and green flirts and then leaves immediately. I kind of thought to myself, as he approaches this flirt right here, I think if he gets a green test, he's going to keep going. And if he doesn't, he might not. We do kind of bump into the ambassador and they walk around behind us, but we do not take the bug attempt. Opie writes, I think is going to keep his foot on the gas here after a little pit stop. Yeah, and the, the bummer of this is we do not get the benefit in this game of um, slow progress. Like, we, we got to highlight after all of this slow start, at least what you'd want is a neutral light. But, oh, and 97%. You could, tell, like, you could tell from the circle positions this is not going to be close enough. And I think any successful rush, or almost any successful rush, had to get that there instead, at least. We are going to get the contact instead. It's going to be a white test here. That's going to slow us down a little bit. We have a minute left. And, and uh, we could still do an inspect swap. So there are a lot of ways to finish here. But the problem is it's going to be so much aggression in a party that has been pretty docile besides us. Yeah, and unfortunately, the inspect swap that would have been just nice to throw together would have been on General, but General has been knocked out by the banana bread. So uh, agreed that this almost certainly is going to be a green. Well, he's going to trimp the green. It has swap, to be right? green. Yeah, yep. there we go. There it is. Uh, we can flirt while it's happening. Maybe throw a little chaff in the air with a fake contact or something. Risk knocking the swapper out. It depends on who goes for it. But at this point, you're just doing whatever you can. Yeah, absolutely. And it feels like takes Minis. It. Yeah, there's a low light, but Minnie is keeping camera on it. There's the immediate camera move. And a pretty routine shot, unfortunately, for Opie. If it wasn't for that early highlight, maybe this works a lot better. But it really seemed like there was a lot of consideration about us from the get-go. A lot of speed, and then a lot of waiting, and then a lot of speed again. I kind of like the stop-start thing. It can work pretty well as a sort of augmented rush play. But in this case, those low lights that Mini Auric is so famous for probably made a fairly manageable shot downright easy. And that is now, speaking of downright easy, it is now 8 to 4 again. The scoreline betrays what has actually happened here. We've seen a lot of very close spy games from OP Rice that just have not quite come together. And now, unfortunately, you go into one of the venues against a good sniper that you really don't want to go into when you're trying to stage a comeback because so often it is snipers all the way down. It is library. Mini Auric is spying first. OP Rice absolutely needs to hold down the sniper the rest of the way just to have a chance. And it starts right now. Mini Auric as wheels in three, two, one, planet. I also feel like the green swap after Opie starts kind of going down is one of the most, like I would say, I was gonna say most Opie moves. And that's just like a player. Players like doing that when they feel like their backs against the wall. It's like, okay, well, you just start throwing stuff up in the air, and you know, not only is the swap sometimes just not guarded, but uh, maybe it also causes problems for them in the future or something like that. Ooh. Let me see this. So uh, clearly, this is going to be a mistaken swap attempt. I think here. Uh, Buns, you know, I, Opie has Buns standing in front of the statue. You get a very clear look. She's off to the side of the pad, so she's not body blocking it. Let me take a look here. Are we, are we thinking it's just um, an animation break, maybe? Or are we just misremembering the statues? Are we thinking it's three cycles? Because he shoots at the very end of the cycle. It's not that he doesn't shoot at the beginning of a cycle, which is what you would normally see if it's, I think they went one cycle too many. So it's either we think we see a break, or we just mismemorized. I don't know. You would you would hope that it would be at least mismemory for a shot that early, uh, but that is that's that's crushing, right? And that is uh, uh, also uh, nerves. Like not only not only uh, is it wrong, of course, you don't need to do it. If if Opie was feeling at all, um, I think comfortable, they just wait. No, because who knows what yeah. Boots does the rest of the game. Wait for the right. banana bread. There's all sorts of stuff. Mini can't play into it, right? That's the thing right. about missing like swaps is your opponent doesn't possibly know that you're going to do it. So they're not going to care about keeping them in conversation or anything, right? It's right. a perfect time. Ex 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 exactly. Exactly. There's a lot of... There's, and, and with five missions, you can wait out a lot of other missions before you have to shoot. The thing that strikes me, though, is just, again, it's not that an AI spawned in front of a statue and maybe you didn't get a great look at it. She is off to the side of that pad. It is an ab normally good look at the statue given that someone is at the statue pad um that is the only thing that really perplexes me about that there was very little in the way of occlusion but it's the kind of thing that happens uh everything coming up mini right now uh both the wins they're earning and the ones they're not and now opie writes i know i keep saying it i'm not going to say must win until it's literally must win but realistically we're getting there now has to spy on library for his tournament life against the person who beat him last year yet again Three, two, one, playing it. And uh, Mini Auric looking at besting Opie again in the SMC here with a five-game margin so far. 
Yeah, and this comes down with library. <laughs> oh, oh. oh my god, this is like I'm glad that Opie doesn't know that he's high lit here because yeah, I feel like he would just go and like white swap a statue or red swap and red contact. I don't know what he would do. If like, I were know. Opie and I felt that highlight, I'd throw my mouse across the room. Oh my god. Yeah, uh, that is that's awful. So I was gonna say, uh, uh, library one of the harder games also to bring yourself back in. Not only just because it's an easier um, sniper venue, but because like the kinds of things you need to do to win as spy aren't just mindless aggression. There's too many missions for mindless aggression. Sometimes you can do that thing where you fall behind. You just do something crazy. And like a courtyard actually is a great example of that. Every once in a while, mindless Russian courtyard does just work. We are gonna start with an early purloin. So this is actually. <sighs> I'm not a fan of this. I'm glad that we hit it. Uh, I mean, this course is much worse because we're highlit, but I'm actually a huge antagonist towards early Purloins on library uh, if that's the first mission you do because then they don't have to watch Purloin the rest of the game, and it's so hard to get microfilm and fingerprint passed. Very true. Um, however, it is taking a while to go off here. Uh, you can see the ambassador rejects a drink. The seduction target's taking one, and oh no, Mini Arc is staring right at it. He is very suspicious of this. It is on screen. Oh, a little occlusion from the ambassador. That is very nice, but it's not good enough because Mini Arc is still confident about the fade, low lighting the taker, and that is always the big thing. We are swapping on the other side of the venue. It's a green swap after our green purloin. There's three minutes left, and this is actually a solid game, except that Mini Oryx seems to be all over it. That low light of wheels might have been it. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I guess we'll see if Minnie is anticipating the swap, though he does see someone go and pick it over. Yeah, he's he is anticipating it. Because the thing is, like, this just feels like a, a spy that's behind play is green swap into green purloin. Uh, the fate is not visible, it. though. The fate is completely not visible. The twin body blocks it beautifully for us. You can see me in New York, not at all confident. He does have it down, I think, to two, but he genuinely did not see that fade. And he probably has some a priori assumptions about the person who's been running around and might have been in the purloin chain and five other things. But technically, we're going to wait, I think, for at least that contact before taking this shot because we did not see that fade at all. Yeah, and so now it is down to two. And uh, uh, I believe, I don't have actually no idea if the other twin was ever in the purloin. <laughs> I like this faking uh, laser to the other side of the venue, like going over and shaking your laser <laughs> and then coming back, right? Yes. And then, yeah, there we go. And then, yeah, I, better so, go yes, I, I, I better go check on my low lights on that side of the venue. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll see what happens in here. Uh, the contact obviously will be the the, the specific, although oh, I feel like also we're being caught for chasing now too, but uh this is just obviously ter terrible for Opie. It's I mean, really hard to do this. I mean, look at that. There's two highlights, but only one of them has been on screen since the swap the whole time. And it's the one that just took a bullet. Opie writes with some pretty strong maneuvers, but I think those would have worked a little better earlier in the match. In this case, Mini Auric all over the purloin. And that was the difference. And then the swap confirmed it. And now we are just starting to run away with this. We are on match point for Mini Auric and tournament point for Opie writes trying to stay alive here in the semifinals. Mini York with a chance to win it right here, right now, playing as Pencil Stash in three, two, one, playing it. I know a lot of people say Andrew Ryan, a lot of people say Walt Disney, but not everyone knows who those people are. Yeah, absolutely. And also, we just don't have as many good names for him because he's just such an unpopular spy pick. But then in the last year or so, he's just shown up a lot more because, okay, we do have an immediate white purloin. Okay, Behind come on, okay, killer. here we go. And unfortunately, that pillar, it might block vision, but it doesn't block bullets, and we get shot right through it. That is another early library shot from Opie, but this time it's right. Yeah, I was going to say, Opie does not like spending time on library. The sniping, at least. <laughs> well, fair enough. Who does? Opie writes, uh, has to spend a little more time there, and this time he has to win his spy. And he's busting out the wheels to try to do it. Three, two, one, playing it. Could it be the best or now second best comeback in Spy Party history from the man himself yet again? If it were going to happen, it would happen right now. That's a little twitch on the pads, but we are not being looked at at all because both the ambassador and the waiter's tray are on the other side of the venue, so we do get away with it. However, it's only a white test. Yeah, the fact that we twitched on the pad and we hit a white test after that, still, I do not think that Opie is fully feeling control. Uh, of course, just really hard on library. Uh, Okay, we are gonna do. Okay, we do get the screen before pickup here, though, which is nice. It is gonna be three at this bookshelf, and we are taking up a ton of space on the right hand side. But we are the second one there. We do get the microfilm here. This is probably Opie's intent for this character altogether from the beginning. Uh, Opie was probably intending to go for a transfer. Uh, transfer on wheels from behind is actually pretty good. Transfer on wheels from the side is awful, but from behind, actually pretty good. 
with wheels, there's a lot of trade-offs like that, where some things are very good and some things are very bad. For example, that little twitch on the pads, most characters, no big deal. But with wheels, it was super noticeable. The entire chair realigned. If we were on screen at all, it would have been instant death and tournament over. But we do get away with it, and we do get away with that microfilm as well. It was not even on screen, so even if it was hard to see, well, it's really hard to see when you're not looking at it. Yeah. This, and so far, this game is actually going pretty well. Like, um, at least I like the pacing and the direction that OP is going from. I don't know about going to microphone this soon. I do actually think we could have done... I mean, I think this is just, if I'm going to get away with this, I want to get away with oh. it right away. Or is it just the fingerprint? It's a hard fingerprint, a difficult fingerprint, rather, and it is failed. But I do like going for the difficult fingerprint first to see if you hit it early in the game and then use that to inform your decision of whether or not you want to complete fingerprint or not. Yeah, actually, I take that back. I just had no idea there's a difficult fingerprint on there. That totally is reasonable. I don't even know if we're actually going to even do the microfilm here. Yeah, we don't even go for it right now. And honestly, maybe even uh, hoping that there's more attention paid to us where we didn't actually do it. So um, that was just for the fingerprint, and maybe if we felt weakness in there. It's always hard on green, though, you know, because like they're always passing by you to want yes. to do a, a microfilm. Speaking Where of greens, green purloin? green purloin behind pillar as spies love to be. We're going to contact and right. split, and it's green test after green test here. These are some very strong maneuvers from Opie Rice, but Mini has shown that they respond very well to a flurry of activity. There goes the purloin. Has it been noticed yet? I think it has, but I'm not sure how many lowlights we're going to get out of this. And is this going to be the moment for the microfilm? It might be. And it's, it's interesting because... <laughs> There it is. A cast member walks by us, and it's a green test anyway, and there's uh, the ambassador is in a lot of danger. Two non-low lights next to him, and I think that might have covered for us. And we've got two hard tells done. We are now inspects and seduce away with two minutes, potentially. But do you want to bug instead? That's the question. Yeah. Uh, I uh, Well, if it's Opie, uh, you would think bug, right? But uh, we'll see what they choose. This Actually, this is an excellent game so far. I'm actually very happy with this. The last game looks like the kind of, like, you know, almost about to lose kind of like just throw things at the wall game this game is well considered um and we're just yeah just throw it just throw it out there make them do it now the it's thing not... is mini might still shoot yes you have time to wait but that highlight is certainly a good sign that highlight is not i'm almost definitely going to shoot if they stay for two full cycles which they're going to do this is probably going to be a win for opie rice the moment of truth coming right up is their tournament over no it is not the sniper moves away and opie rice with his back against the wall comes up with a spy win on library Oh my god, like of all the of all the times to finally get your spy in line enough to get past Mini, you do it on library with a well-considered spy game and without even relying on something like Bug or Fingerprint. Uh, that was just an excellent game. Well done to Opie on that one. And that was a good use of a purloin distraction. We actually got the microfilm done in the aftermath, and there's still tons of people left. And Mini didn't have as many lowlights as they had in the previous game partially because of also the um, the early maneuvers and just lots of distractions. So actually, that's that's kind of the point there. The purloin early in the last game helped us notice things like the swap that happened. The purloin late in that game, there's the window of a spike of increase of attention, and then the attention's going to drop, but there's still lots of stuff going on. I liked that one a lot. Yeah, it was a contact at the same time. We split. There was a good amount of activity, and the microfilm was half done. If you're trying to do the entire microfilm afterwards, that would have been more like the other Perloin game, right? And that's much, much harder to do. Very impressive game from Opie Rice all around, and one of those games where you think the green tests were, in fact, why he won with the Perloin, the contact, and the microfilms. He needed probably every single one of them, and he hit every single one of them. And speaking of every single one of them, that's exactly how many of these remaining four games he's going to need to stay alive, and it's going to start... Sniping on high rise against Mini Oric, who still has another chance and several waiting behind it to close this out in three, two, one, plan it. And uh, let me see, transfer off, fingerprint off. It's high rise, so we do actually have to pay attention to the missions. Exactly. And I was going to ask, uh, uh, you're sniping. What are you looking for? Like, just a priori, like before you even interact with this at all, are you thinking that they're going to be trying to throw a timeout at, at you or just shooting for soft tails first one that's done? I mean, if I'm Mini Auric, I have so much margin, and I have sniper, multiple sniper games to win. I'm gonna just test. I'm gonna test them. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna try to go coin flips. I'm gonna try to test them and make them wait. I'm gonna see who takes bug pads and gets shot. When you only need to win once, it's in your interest to flip a coin four times. There you go. And I also noticed we do a little nod at um, look like uh, one of the twins playing twin taking a drink which is interesting, but there's something happened back there. It might have actually just been behind planted. Mini Oric likes something that they saw, but I can't quite tell. 
Yeah, it's sometimes hard to read those highlights and lowlights. Uh, as much as we played the game, um, sniper motivations are often a mystery to us. Normally a lot goes into them and we can only guess it. At some of it, uh, especially when we are not or were not pathing snipers ourselves back in the day. Yeah, and it's curious if it was for something like a missed fingerprint. It didn't look like Ambassador had the drink, so it didn't seem like it was a fingerprint that they grabbed. But if it was, they're grabbing briefcase now, too, which would be an interesting thing. I didn't see the second nod on that one, though. So we'll see if these twins, who've actually been near each other a lot. I'm very curious about these twins, because these they look like they've been flirting with each other. They've just been kind of in conversation all game. They could really cause some problems for OP. Yeah, we don't talk about the twins flirting with each other too much. I will note, however, that it, they would double their wardrobe instantly uh, if they got together. So there is that, logistically at least. Minioric, 61% on the flirt, no other progress, and making me look smart. This is the kind of slow-paced game that I just suggested I would do if I were in their position. Yeah, absolutely. And just kind of like take stabs, you know, take stock at who's doing what, and then stab later at um, whoever actually does something. We are going to finish up the flirt here in this conversation circle, and the double agent is in with us right after and it's not the best time for a contact, but you know, sometimes that makes it seem like the, well, actually it's not that bad. Uh, the other, the other, other DA though. Yeah, I think it's a pretty decent time. I also should add that if it were me, I'd probably try really hard to hit a green purloin. The underrated thing about high rise sometimes, although I think the word is slowly getting out, is that there are a really large number of positions that Toby can offer someone a drink where it's very hard to see the fade. There's heads in the way, uh, the lower viewing angle in general. There are so many places, as opposed to just one or two areas where if you get some bad luck, it's hard to see. There are a lot of bad luck areas for monitoring the purloin fade uh, on high rise particularly. So a green purloin uh, really is, can be more like a true 50-50. Yeah, absolutely. There we and go. I actually still oh there's the green purloin, just like you had said. I have permanent uh, uh permanent trauma from hat blocking purloin, I think against versus <laughs> drawn onward on high rise. Oh, uh, but when the ambassador takes it, it doesn't work nearly as well. But we haven't shot yet. Thirty seconds left. We might have gotten away with this. Oh my goodness, we get an assist from the party in a cast member taking the purloin, but I don't think we had good control of the chain. Banana bread. We don't. And here's the banana bread. Okay, so here's the moment. And there is still the twin in the front front, front conversation. This looks like Ape Opie is going to be challenging Mini to finish. Yes, he is challenging Mini to finish. He doesn't think he's done, and it is just over. That is it. The early... I, I want to point out two things. There was a timeout early in the match, and we did talk about the possibility of committing to a timeout and having it pay dividends later, and I swear to God, people, I had no idea this happened in the, in the last game when I said it. But there it is. Every now and then, uh, Spy Party players make you look smart rather than stupid, which is much more common, to be perfectly honest. But in this case, Opie holds his shot at the end, and no bullet comes off as his tournament comes to a close. Mini Oryx with a solid 11-6 victory. It's going to propel him back into the finals of the Spy Party Master Championship for the second year in a row. And I will say, the thing that I am at least happy about for Opie in this one is that this is actually a pretty, this is a pretty solid if similar showing to the last time that he played Mini Oryx in SMC. Um, but it's not the blowout that was versus Rob. It was just, like, I... I like, whenever you do bad within a tournament where you still live on, a bad result kind of haunts you till the end of it. At least Opie gets to leave with a pretty solid showing. The early spy games were there. Um, and honestly, there was a bunch of games in the beginning that could have gone the other way with just a little bit of luck. It still feel like Mini was going to get the best of him, but this match felt closer um, than it actually ended up being in the scoreboard. I think that's totally right. There were three or four games that could have gone either way. And think about that. You flip three of them and you're up nine to eight. So uh, that is just the way it goes sometimes. I've been in matches like that myself. I'm sure you have as well. And, uh, well, since we're going to kick it over to Lagorv and Wrestler right now to close things out, gentlemen, I'm sure you've been in those kinds of matches too. For sure. Yeah, I'm glad OP was able to show us that he's still got it and was able to get a nice mission win uh, towards the end there. Yeah, definitely agreed, Vals. I also... I expected, honestly, a bit more of a win, and I, I'm glad that OP put up some firefight and flipped like those two, maybe much closer score line. Well, it's so often the case that the scoreline does not tell the whole story. You got to actually watch the cast to get the whole story, and uh, we thank you for doing exactly that. Uh, anyone else want to say anything before we close this out? 
Yeah, uh, I'd like third place match uh, still coming up for Opie versus the I guess the loser of Rob versus Ada, right? Correct. Uh, uh, so would... not released from the hell that is competitive spy party just yet, <laughs> which not feels unfair, sure. right? Yeah, you lose and you have to keep playing. Come on. But with all that, uh, I guess I'll close it out. I thank you, every single one of you, both casters and uh, Lagor, for joining and narrating this epic set. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for hosting it. Absolutely. And, and, and another thank you to everyone watching it. And um, I want to quickly mention that this game was Spy Party. If you like what you saw and you want to see more of it, you can buy it either on Steam or through Early Access on the Spy Party website. And if you want to follow any more of the Spy Party community tournaments that are going to be happening, I would like to advertise our Discord, discord.gg slash spy party. And uh, there's currently one tournament a newbie tournament going around so even if you're newbie you could join still and i can drop a little spoiler that next week is going to be a tournament a, a community event happening in two weeks that'll be announced next week on the discord so feel free to stick around for that but and indeed the semi second semi-finals of smc of raw versus adafiash will be happening tomorrow and hopefully you'll a, this is going to be as epic as the last one. But until then, fare thee well.